Hey everybody, as you might expect, there are loads of incredible plants blooming right now in the greenhouses, but there are a couple that have really caught my attention. These are all plants that I've never grown before, but as I start seeing the blooms, I am completely enchanted by them, and I wanted to show them to you right now so that uh, you can enjoy them just as much as I am, and uh, maybe we can try growing them together. So let me start right back here. This one here is called Master Wart Abbey Road. And if you take a look at the flowers on that, they're really understated, but absolutely beautiful. Kind of a complicated flower on that. Antique kind of coloring and look to it. The leaves look a little bit like an anemone as well. So it's just a very unusual flower. I'm gonna head over all the daylilies here and keep going, keep going. Holy Stella Dioro, those things are really in bloom. Uh, there's also some fall sunflowers, but we're not looking at those because I want to take you over here to the Mardi Gras Hellenium. This thing has been blooming for quite some time and we have always, you know, we've grown it in the pots and it gets nice and tall and blooms and blooms and blooms, but I've never grown it outdoors. So I'm really curious. Look at the petals on that. It looks as though someone had hand tinted every single petal just to give it a little extra intensity. It's just, it's absolutely one of my favorites. Now we're going to keep going. I'm going to take you past all these plants here, past the Crocosmia. I grow that in Ireland. In Ireland, it grows as, in the ditches almost as a weed. And then there's butterfly bush. I've actually been able to grow that one, even though it's a zone five and can be a little temperamental. I've had really good luck with it. We have pink and purple and violet for that one. Oh, and there's a hummingbird coming flying through. I haven't had as much luck with lavender. I think I always end up overwatering it and it's never really happy. Here is some um, uh, blue anise hyssop. I think that's how you call it. Somebody came in asking for, I think they said it was uh, hummingbird weed or something like that. And when I looked it up, I realized that's exactly what we have. The pollinators love it. You can actually see some of them flying around right now. Uh, so that gets nice and tall and just has a nice flower on it. Let's see, the Leatris is always popular. Here's one that I want to tell you about. It is the butterfly weed. This is the uh, pink flowered one. Uh, usually we have yellow and orange, but this is something new that we're trying this year is the pink one. And it is really a beautiful flower on it. And this is a must have if you wanna draw uh, the butterflies in because they do absolutely love this plant. Uh, I think the caterpillars also really like it. So uh, that's one to kind of add to your list. Let's see, I'm gonna go past the Gallardia. That's always full of color. And then I'm gonna take one peek at this other sunflower here because the, not only are the flowers beautiful, but take a look at the leaves. That's that variegated leaf sunflower. And those have just been blooming nonstop now for, for over a month. And I just, it's a really unusual leaf. So I just, I just want to show you that one. Um, and then over here is the scabiosa. I don't know if you've ever seen scabiosa before. If you look at the flower on it, kind of a very interesting kind of uh, I always think it reminds me of Raggedy Ann and Andy, uh, the way it looks. And then it has this really irregular uh, kind of uh, branching on it. So you're going to see that's always kind of a little zigzaggy. Uh, so it always has a little bit of a wild effect to it, which is really quite nice uh, and just adds a little different texture uh, when in the garden because most plants you know, don't grow in such a kind of random way. So that's kind of a nice one there. The echinacea is looking beautiful. I've grown echinacea, so that one I'm not gonna talk about today. Um, but I just wanted to make sure I showed you that. Oh, I will come over here to the Maltese Cross. So this is the Maltese Cross has a couple of names, uh, but it always has a nice flower. This one is the lipstick, so it's more red. And then there's an orange version called Orange Gnome. So, I mean, so many beautiful plants in here. So here in Greenhouse 2, I'm going to take you past the Rubecchia. I have grown that before, but the colors on some of these blossoms are absolutely beautiful. And then we have the daisies. I've grown those as well, but those are starting to show up here. They're really beautiful. But this is what I really want to show you. This is the Penstemon. It's the Midnight Masquerade variety. And just look at the color on there. So you've got these almost white flowers with these beautiful lavender kind of throats. And then look at the stems on these plants. They're really incredible purples and reddish color and it actually looks like they've been kind of colored to get such a, such an intense rich red purple on there they're they're really beautiful so even when they're not flowering you get really good leaf uh, color on it so it's a nice one but look at the size of those flower heads they're they're really quite large and they have those kind of bell-shaped blossoms on it i am impressed with this luminary ultraviolet 
uh, flocks. It's really quite bright and very nice. Now here's a Rebecca. I've grown Rebecca's, but I've never grown this variety. It's called Irish Eyes. So it is not in the uh, Black Eyed Susan family because look at the color of the eye on that. It's green. So they call it a Daisy Glorioso, but it really is uh, in the Rubecchia family. And you can see it's just got really good orange and then a beautiful eye in there. So that's one I do want to grow. So here's a more traditional uh, Penstemon. Uh, it still has those purple leaves, but not the intensity that we see on that other variety there. Uh, baby's breath is going well, but over here there is some Coreopsis. I haven't grown Coreopsis actually, but it's super easy. It's almost like a wildflower type of thing, but you can see it's also called tick seed. So there's a lot of different varieties. So this is kind of one of the, uh, you know, bigger flowers. This is more the thread leaf. So it has a much uh, feathery texture to much more feathery texture to that leaf. And then we're gonna head over here cause I do want to show you some asters, uh, but not without stopping and visiting the gooseneck strife. And that's the one where the flower always looks like it's a goose bobbing his head in the wind. So we always like that one. And going past the phlox that is getting ready to burst. This ultraviolet phlox does have great flowers on it anyway, but I'm, I've grown that before. So we do have some asters. So we have some pink ones getting ready to open. So that's a little bit more unusual. You don't always see the pink asters. Uh, you usually see them more in these purple colors. So you can see some of those starting over here. Let's see, that's just, just getting ready to open. And then some more pink ones there. So kind of nice, but the one I'm really interested in showing you is this yellow one. It's a creamy, buttery yellow, and I haven't really seen a yellow aster before. So I was really excited about this one when we got it, and uh, definitely the pollinators love it. These moths have been climbing all over uh, these asters. So it's just been really interesting and a fun one to watch because there's a lot of activity going on around these plants. I wanted to show you this Ligularia. It's called Bottle Rocket. Look at those fantastic yellow flowers on there and then the dark, rich leaves. Now this is a plant that likes more of a, a part sun situation. So it doesn't like full sun, doesn't like full shade, but it will brighten up a part sun area in an incredible way. And it has that nice thick flower stalk. It's really a nice plant, uh, something completely different too, because you have the big leaves, big flowers, I shouldn't say big flowers, big flower stalk with little flowers on it, but lots of color, like really nice. So also back here, there's some things that I wanna show you that actually aren't available until next year, but I figure you wouldn't, wouldn't mind seeing a little preview. We sometimes have a hard time getting our hands on wisteria. Well, we got some in bare root this year, so it's not ready for sale right now, but look, we already have flowers on it. So that tells you next year, this is gonna be one beautiful wisteria and it's coming in the big pot. It's a decent size already. So that's gonna be a fun one. And then I wanna go just sneak down here. Uh, we do have mock orange available, but take a look at this mock orange for next season. I mean, this it's called Snow White absolutely covered with flowers. I wish I could put this out and in public for display because these are so beautiful, they actually look artificial. And when you stand here, you get that beautiful fragrance of the mock orange. It is just an incredible plant. We have a couple other varieties of mock orange that have finished flowering. These are the ones that we had planted bare root. So we have, they're quite large and they are covered in flowers. I mean, and oh, if we had smell of vision you would be in heaven right now. Let me just tell you that. So it's, it's just a, this is a fun spot to be right now. So I am definitely adding the mock orange to my list. I mean, beautiful white flowers and like I could actually sit here all night and just enjoy the aroma here. It's not like super perfumey and not super flowery. It's just a really nice scent to it. I, I really like mock orange, okay? I'm gonna confess it. We also have some other varieties, the Illuminati series from Proven Winners. Uh, those are almost done blooming. Uh, these are just a little bit behind the other ones, but uh, really exciting. And all these plants are just kind of fun because they're a little bit different and uh, they're definitely ones that I wanna give a try. Uh, maybe some of you have done them before, uh, but they all seem pretty easy. They're growing very, easily in their nursery pot. So I can only imagine they're gonna do even better when they're in the ground. So I'm thrilled about that. So maybe we can do a little grow along. So get some, uh, I'm gonna put some of these out, uh, gonna find some places for them. Uh, most of them are full sun. Some of them can take a little bit less. That Ligularia can't take full sun though. Uh, the rest of them all though can. So lots of options here. So, hey, I'm just excited. I got to show you a couple plants that maybe you never heard of before or that you maybe uh, just didn't think about. So add them to your list and I'll talk to you guys all very soon.